Um, so today we're talking about lead gen. Lead gen is uh, really important. If you're not in the lead generation business, you're not in any business. You know, I, I, you know, I speak all over the place. I was in Indiana last week, freezing my tail off, by the way. And it was funny. It was the first time whenever I started talking about lead gen, I said, I asked people, what business are we in? And um, I always get the same answer. The people business, the relationship business, the hair growing business, which, you know, me and Matt are really good at. Um, you know, although, and finally, after doing this hundreds of times, finally, one somebody said, the lead generation business. I'm like, finally, somebody understands it. If you are not in lead generation, you're not in anything. So um, I know uh, I want to get to Bobby first because, you know, he's always standing there and I, I know he can only stand up for more than 20 minutes. So, okay, Bobby, take it over, bud. Oh, you're kidding me. I can stand up all day. I never sit down. So, all right. So I got some great information for you guys here. Uh, so chat GPT uh, was asked, why do real estate agents fail? And the number one reason was actually uh, a inconsistent lead flow. So they just don't know how to generate leads. And then the second thing is they don't know how to market themselves. So hopefully we can fix some of that today. Um, you know, when you look at lead sources, it really comes down to three different things for sellers. I'm going to start with sellers first today. Um, you got your sphere of influence. You got your farm or digital farm like I like to do. I don't pick one neighborhood. I'm digitally farming all of San Diego County uh, so that they, they hear uh, my brand. It's cheaper to do that. And you can actually generate leads online. Those people then go automatically right into your CRM. So uh, so a digital farm is what I like to do. And then the third way is your niche. My my niche is move up and move down sellers. Um, you know, whatever your niche is, that's your third third way for sellers. Now, um, for sphere of influence, did you know that 70% of all sellers say that they got their real estate agent from either a relationship or a referral? So um, so if you're not spending a lot of time calling sellers and building that relationship, then you're not going to be that person. And so uh, if you're looking for sellers online, then that's 30% or other means. That's 30%. So it's a very small number. So I would definitely focus on reaching out to your past clients at least twice a year, especially your top, say, 200. Go through your database. If you've sold 1,000 homes, Pick the, the 200 people that you love the most and put them as a VIP and make sure you call those people at least two times a year. You also want to have a monthly newsletter going out to them every single month or even weekly. So if you have a VA, there's, what's the harm in having them put together a simple template? Here's the deal of the week. Here's a quick video that you should be doing anyways uh, for your social stuff. So, you know, that way you're repurposing it and you're using it on a on a continuous basis. Uh, for a postcard four times a year. That postcard should probably be talking about properties you've sold. So that way they see that, hey, you know, Bobby's selling all these homes, you know. So uh, when we're ready, they're naturally going to call me. <clears throat> and that's what you want. All right. So. Um, make sure you're making your calls. Your hour of power is the most important thing. Now for sellers, there's a few other lead sources that right now are very effective. Pre-NOD list, not your, your foreclosure list, not your NOD list, your pre-NODs. You can get these uh, this list from Land Voice or Red X uh, or even your title company. If you're not calling these people, these are potential listings. Did you know that 50% of all uh, pre-NODs that just miss one payment end up going to foreclosure? So that's a very big number. So these are people that need to sell. And um, if I'm a seller and I just missed my payment, I'd sure like to hear, hey, the market's actually picking up. We just got multiple offers and sold 60,000 over asking and 75,000 over the last comp. Do you know anybody interested in selling? You know, if they miss their payment, they're going to be like, Okay, I need to sell. So that's a very big one. Uh, going after old expireds is also a huge thing right now. Homes that sold, you know, or couldn't sell two years ago or three years ago, you know, I'd be reaching out to those people. And then new expireds, 
you know, letting them know that the market has shifted back to a hot market again, it, you know, if, if, of course, that is the case in your local market, that is the case here in San Diego. And then the other two big ones are divorce and probate. Make sure you're building some relationships with attorneys in both of those fields and then put together some lead gen and put together some videos uh, explaining all of the things, all the pitfalls uh, of not having an estate uh, or excuse me, a, a trust, um, you know, um, you know, what happens, uh, you know, in that, that situation, it goes to probate, all that stuff. Um, the other thing here is off market properties, do a search for homeowners that uh, or, or investors that own maybe five or 10 or 15 properties, whatever that number is, that list is going to get small, and then reach out to those people, especially for people that are um, out of the area. If they live outside of California, for example, those are great people for me. They might have 15 properties. Maybe they want to liquidate four or five of them. And so you want to kind of call, uh, reach out to them and, and uh, build that relationship. On the buy side, uh, very, very simple. It, you know, and, and both of these are very simple. If you're not doing your sphere and you're not calling your sphere, don't do anything else. I mean, it is the dumbest thing that you could possibly do for your business by not concentrating on the people who already know you and like, like you. So if you are not doing the, the calls to your people or doing any activities to the people in your database, don't spend money anywhere else. All you're doing is going to hurt your business and it's going to make, make it tougher for you to turn a profit. So, so focus on your sphere. Every single uh, person you call, ask them if they've thought about maybe pulling equity out of their current home and then putting it into an investment property. This is the time to get a deal on a property. And if you don't believe that, they're not cer certainly going to believe it. And then the last thing I'll say is on... Uh, your own listings, run ads on them on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, wherever you wherever you can, you're going to pull in leads into your database. But you might you, if you're going to do uh, run ads, you got to have a system for follow up. If you're just going to call once, forget it, you're never going to get them on the phone. And when you do get them on the phone, have something compelling, you know, have a good pitch. If you don't have a good pitch, and it's quick, they're going you're going to lose them immediately so and then for buyers open houses right now i mean you got 20 30 40 uh, people walking into some of these open houses so let me think about that is that a good use of two or three hours to be able to talk or to be face to face with somebody it's not good if you just show up and you don't have a purpose you don't have a pitch you got to show up with a, a a real purposeful a purposeful pitch and something different off-market properties is something that you can pull people in. Uh, a cash buyer program, anything that is your uh, you, your unique selling proposition, you want to make sure you are conveying that to them. So that's what I got for you today. I'll pass it hey, off to you. Hey, Bobby. Yes. Uh, so then can I comment? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so I just want to be clear because like Bobby's speaking from, you know, being in business for a long time, right? So he's able to implement a lot of the things he's talking about uh, because he has a team too. But if you're newer, pick one or two of the things Bobby mentioned and master it. Okay. Don't, don't, one thing I will say, because I, I, I train a lot of investors, right? So it's the same concept. I will ne never tell them like, oh, do bandit signs, uh, do direct mail. And all and start calling agents all at the same time. Launch all three at the same time next week. Like, no, like that's not gonna work, right? You're gonna be scatterbrained, right? You're gonna have no system, you're gonna have no follow-up created because you will have no time to do any of it. Pick one, master it, systemize it so it becomes part of your weekly flow. Then you add the next one, right? And then you add the next one. But do not please do not if you're a newer agent like don't take bobby's advice of all six campaigns that he just told you on the seller side and try to launch them all next week like you're gonna not succeed trust Perfect. me no so, that's, that's great advice i mean start with the people you know even if you haven't sold a single house if you reach the, out to the people that you know and you start building that rapport and that and uh you know they're going to use you when they're ready they might not be ready today but they will use you but uh you know certainly don't spend money on this other stuff until you've got that that one thing down
And Bobby, someone asked a question. How do you find those investors with groups of properties? Um, Title companies, guys. It's so easy. You, you make sure you, you have a good relationship with your title company. You reach out to them and you say, I need a list of this, this, and this. So that way you are able to have the right um, people that you want to want to deal with. So if you want to only deal with multifamily, that's a great niche to go after. So um, so just, you know, the riches are in the niches. And so that's why I, I think it's always important to kind of go after that kind of stuff. But divorce and probate, those are those are recession proof, especially right now. I mean, there's lots of divorces happening, unfortunately, and those can turn into three sales for high net worth individuals. And that's really where the magic happens when you can do that. And that's just for them. If you do a good job with them, you're going to get more referrals from both spouses. And so, and, and I can tell you one thing, uh, divorced people know other divorced people. So the, you could do, do three, three, three very quickly. So again, the riches in the niches, go after it. So and, uh, you said the riches are in the mitches? Is that what I heard you say? In the mitches, <laughs> yes. There's, there's another riches, question. The riches uh, in the riches, for sure. Hey, anyway, another question. Folks, who the folks who own multiple properties usually have brokers. What's the value proposition for them to switch to us? That's so let so me handle that because I work. Can I answer that real quick? So Because yeah. I work with investors, right? And, and we also have an investment company. So I kind of understand like how you can actually approach us if, if we're the investors where I would actually listen to you as an agent, right? So, and I've, I've, I've taught this on previous masterminds here is that if you're trying to break through into the, the, the investor, right? Because when you're talking about multiple properties, that's what I'm assuming you're saying. A, an investor that is buying properties in an LLC or a corporation, right? Which like Bobby mentioned, the title company can give you that list, right? So when you do reach out to them, before you reach out, do a little bit of investigating online, right? Learn about them. See how many properties, who's their listing agent? Is it, comp, do you see that they're listing everything with one agent or there's, or do they have all different agents listing those properties, right? That can start giving you uh, the inside ideas of what is really happening. Some investors will have an in-house agent, but a lot of them actually don't. They rely on agents bringing them deals and they will list those properties with those agents that bring the deals. And that, that will be clear when you start seeing that this particular investor is not loyal to any one agent. That's probably why, right? However, how do you kind of build rapport and build our relationship? What I would do in the beginning is offer to do open houses and any type of marketing for their listings on top of what their agent is already doing. And I can guarantee you that whatever the age, whoever the agent is that's representing that investment's property, investor's property, there's is there's no way that that agent is able to do an open house at that property every single week, every single day of the week, probably not even every weekend. So what you offer, you actually get to know that listing agent and say, hey, I see that you work with this investor. I love what they're doing. I love their work. And I just want to offer any help you you might need in terms of open houses, because I know investors love to have open houses at their vacant house. Why not? Right. And I want to be in a, a, a hand here to help you and see if we can do business together where I can hold an open house where maybe you can't do it or the days that are not being done by you and your company. So that's one way of getting in the door and standing out as the agent for the investor slash the listing agent that's listing that home, because guess what? Eventually that investor is gonna start seeing your name because you're gonna be providing feedback to the listing agent who then gives that feedback to the investor. And they're gonna start seeing your name over and over again. We're like, who is this guy? Or who is this gal that is doing all of our open houses? I kind of like her, I like her feedback. I like how detailed she is. That's how you start getting in front of those people. And eventually you, you'll never know, like those opportunities will open up where they'll be like, crap, man, maybe we should have them list one of our homes one day. Like it, that's how it happens. So that's just one idea I give you, but there's more. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do here, guys, is because we have a lot of us on and I want to make sure we get through everybody and we could, all of us here could do a whole class on lead generation, all of us. So what I want to do from here on out, or we'll never get to all of us. And, I, and I'm going to start and we're just going to, Pick people right away. One or two things that you do to lead generation, keep it about 
three minutes or less if possible, or we'll be here so, till next week. Hey, um, Mitch, how, how about we do what we discussed that if, if this organically goes, then we have part two. We don't all have to go. We I can mean, do that. We can do that. I just want to make sure that we, we don't overwhelm people with too many things here. Um, yeah. cause I know, I know, you know, I deal with a lot of agents every day as we all do. And, and a lot of people are saying that we, over, I, I overwhelm them with too much stuff, but anyways, let, let's go there. If we have time, we'll go with to more. If we have to go to part two, we'll go to part two. So I have like 50 things, 50 ways to generate leads. I could talk all day. So here's my thing I want to do with everybody. Uh, I just did this in Indiana last week. And before we left the class, somebody got a $980,000 listing. I did this in Orlando not too long ago. And we got a um, hundred people who were there. We got 185 leads in eight minutes. So I'm going to put this in the chat box so you can copy it verbatim, but here's what you do. I will, and this is Gene Frederick talking to this. So this is, this is my thing. <clears throat> you're going to write down in your, in your notes on your phone, you're going to write, I'm in a class right now and we're having a contest and I could really, really use your help. If you know someone looking to buy or sell a home, could you send me their contact info? I did this with one of my agents two weeks ago. And that's what I did two months ago. He got two leads, two days, two two leads in five minutes, two sales in two weeks. So I'll type that. It's in the chat box. So you guys can have it. If you do this while we're on the call here today, it'd be really cool to see if anybody generates leads. But generally, every time I do this, we generate tons of leads in a short period of time because your friends will help you. Like Bobby said, working your sphere is free. You have more business sitting here. I can't get my phone to show up on there than you do anywhere else in the world. And your friends will help you if they like you. Now, if they don't like you, you're screwed. But yeah. um, but I'll type that. That's my one thing I'm going to give you this. And obviously, open houses, which we all talked about the past two weeks. Uh, Pete, take it away. I didn't know you were, you were putting me on the hot spot. I mean, I want to, there's so much we can talk about when it comes to lead generation. And just, you know, pick one thing that you do really well. There's, there's a million different ways to lead generate. But I think it comes down to not just lead generation. It really comes down to lead conversion and the questions that you ask and how you convert to get people moving forward, especially in a market like this. Um, I wanted to kind of introduce Dave. I mean, Dave's a, a big part of mine. He's a huge luxury agent in Park City and he kills it all the time. So Dave's got some really interesting stories that he shared with me yesterday on lead generation that he's been doing recently to get some great listings and some great buyers. Dave, take take the time. I wanted I wanted you to take my time. Okay, um, thanks, Pete. And I'll make it brief, but I put together a, a really, really quick presentation. So I'm gonna make this as quick as I can, but I can tell you this. My favorite lead sources are absentee owners, investors, second homeowners, vendors, and luxury, okay? And as you can see, that I, I choose lead sources that are that most realtors don't focus on or even know about. And the reason I do this, it gives me an advantage because there's so little competition that doesn't. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do other basic lead sources that are clearly effective. I mean, expired, old, expired, canceled, withdrawn, FISBOs, you know, all of that right now. But the thing that we got to understand right now is it. There's many, many, many more sellers out there that need our help. The people in, on this group, the people that are serious about their business, the people that are, you know, focused, you know, it takes more than a heartbeat and a real estate license to sell a house now. Like, you know, it wasn't like it was a couple of years ago or a, even several months ago. And this is a giant advantage for us, you know, as full-time professional realtor, realtors, um, <clears throat> uh, this is what this is our job. And I love what Mitch said. We're in the sales business. We're in the lead generation business. If you're not generating leads and you're not in the you're not doing sales, you're you're out of it. So there's a couple of things that I do. Um, and, and you mentioned the quiet sell or an off market program. Um, we have one. It's called the Lawson Team Quiet Sell and Off Market Program. I think when we went over in our team meeting today, we had 78 properties in Park City that are on our list of potential listings. And we get people to raise their hand and let us know, hey, you would it, Pete, would it be okay if I put your house at 123 Main Street on our quiet sale and off market program? And if somebody's willing to buy it and pay you good money, it, would you consider it? So that's one. Um, we also have this. This is a four page um 
brochure that we use in the luxury markets. Um, I took a $7 million listing and that helped me get that listing just yesterday. Um, another piece that we have is this. This is a very, very great book for buyers. And what it is, is it is basically the Lawson Team Yellow Page Guide for Park City. And when you open it, there's 15 realtors. They're all on my team. <laughs> can, no one else can get in it. But it talks, you know, and then what it is, and it takes time to put this together, but it has appraisers, architects, attorneys, avalanche information, bakeries, child care, chiropractor, and so on. These are people that we know and trust. And so we give this out. We print hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these at a time. Every one of the agents, they pass it out. And that is a phenomenal thing. But this is what I want. This is one of the things I want everybody to take away. You have a group here that we probably sell. A, I think we sell a million or one point five billion dollars of real estate with the people on this group. So if you're out there, we have ideas. But this is what I want to take away, you to take away. You're going to hear lots of great lead sources. And my recommendation is and you've already heard a little bit is take great notes on this call. And if we have to do another one, do it. Pick two or three of the ideas to implement in 2023. Then come up with a plan that is 90 days to implement just one at a time. And I always tell people in, my, in the coaching is, when you are considering lead sources, ask these four questions. What are the skills that I need to practice um, or, and to master in order to, for me to feel comfortable about working this lead source? Number two, how long will it take me to implement this lead source? And what is the time I'm going to dedicate to this source? Three, how long will the particular lead source take me to become profitable in my business? And four, how much will your chosen lead choice, choice cost you? And do you have the money? I mean, this thing, we send this piece out and it's, it's $2.40 a piece, right? So you got to have the budget. And, and then I'm going to end with this. Remember, lead generation is the most important activity or job that we do in real estate. Once you get in the habit of doing it every day, and I said every day, by the way, you have to do it when? Every day, right? Um, then your business is going to grow and it'll grow at a rapid place or pace. And in order to do this, you have to block out time every morning, one to two hours a day. Do it religiously. You know, I have a saying from 15 years ago with the staff on my team. I said, if you bring me a problem while I'm prospecting or doing my lead generation, you are the problem. In other words, that is an appointment. You know, if I'm going on a $7 million listing appointment, am I going to be 100% focused on it for two hours? Yes. This is just important. And then I have a quote. Nothing happens until a sale is made. And so many sales come from lead generation. And if you're a newer, newer agent, you do a lot of lead generation and then you're going to do, you know, what Bobby was saying. Then, then you have all that past client center influence to sell, right? And what do we know? We know that people in every single one of our marketplaces is going to buy or sell real estate. And our job today as a professional realtor is to find a buyer, find a seller, that wants to sign a contract today and focus on it. If that's what your focus is, I'm looking today for one buyer or one seller. I'm going to look for it. You'll find it. Thank you. Great stuff, Dave. I love that. And Dave's listed a lot of properties, you guys. You know, the old saying when it comes to leads is you got a list to last, especially in this market. And, you know, if you're controlling the inventory, you're controlling the market, which is a big thing. And a lot of Inventories is still tight right now because a lot of people haven't put their houses on the market, but they're thinking about it or they thought about it. You have to just get in front of them. I just have a quick tip and make it kind of fun and loose, you know, just, just to ex, uh, expand on what Mitch was saying, you know, send out a text today to everybody that you're connected to and ask them who, the, you know, the Super Bowl is coming up. It's between KC and Philly. Who do they feel is going to win? What do they feel the, the final score is going to be? And say, look, we're trying to make 2023 a super year for us and our team. 
Uh, there's a lot of great opportunities out there. We need your help in helping to score. You know, who do you know is looking to buy, sell, or invest in the next 60 days? Whoever answers back with the closest to the final score gets a dinner on me at Eddie V's or some kind of restaurant in your area or some kind of gift card for two. And I'm telling you, people love little contests like that and you, you stay top of mind. So I think that's a good way to, to generate some leads. Let's go out to uh, Philly talking about the Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. There he is. The Let's ROG, it, the real estate Let's opportunity go. guy. He's going to yeah. use that. He's going to use that Super Bowl text today. I already know. He's licking his chops. He's I giving am. away cheese steaks. Give us some ideas on how to generate some leads. We're all hitting the first level of the leads. What I have a lot of my guys doing is going one level deep on them. Instead of stopping at the people we're working with or the ones we're talking to them, while we're talking to them, it's like the white car theory. You buy a new white car, you see more white cars. I'll be the same thing. So when you're buying real estate, all of a sudden you have more people. So what you want to do is go one deep on them. They may not be ready to buy in the next two to three months, but somebody in their family might be. So what we've been doing is doing a double prospecting. Great. Love to work with you. Who else do you know that we can help within your family or in your sphere that we can be connected to? So we're getting out of judgment of first line closes and going to the second line all the time because you never know whose aunt, grandmother, uncle owns a moldy unit, is, is getting ready to sell a million dollar home, looking to move to Nashville or looking to move out to you know Park City and all that stuff. You don't know until you ask. So as a different tip of everybody's going, we're going one level deep and looking for more leads on the leads that are calling us the second they, we connect with them. I love it. Okay, let's get, that's good stuff, Lurchy. I like how we're, we're, we're making this pop. Let's go to the, the, green, the green mountains of New Hampshire to Brian Moses. He'll part the Red Sea, get you all the leads you need. He's a national trainer and extraordinaire on how to generate more business. Brian, give us some tips that people can put into action today to generate more leads. Fantastic. So I don't like to chase, hunt, pursue. Nobody likes to be pestered. Um, that certainly works and you can build a decent business with it. And if you do a great job, you'll get referrals. I prefer to use bait to get highly motivated and highly qualified buyers and sellers to reach out to me. If I can share my screen, I'll show you a couple of examples and then I'll let you I'll let you pass the torch. Okay, not yet. Anything? Mitch, I think you have to make him the host. Jay, Jay's the host, she has to do it. Okay, Dre, you need to uh, make Brian the host so he can share the screen. And while we're doing that, you know, marketing is like fishing. You can't catch a fish without bait. You're not going to catch sellers without bait. And in real estate or in business, your bait is your message. And the more compelling, the more irresistible, the more unique your message is, the better it'll work because there's no shortage of real estate agents. Still not allowing me to share my screen. Oh, okay. Um, I am not the... I'm just a panelist, I'm not the host. So let me text her, just keep going, Brian. Let me text her. Okay. Um, so step number, understand that it's not about branding and self-promotion. The fact that more people know you're in real estate isn't going to be a unique, compelling advantage. In fact, most people know three or four real estate agents. So the, if you're the fifth one that they know, you go a one in five shot. So you need to solve a problem and uh, we don't call, you know, we don't use, everybody thinks that we're all alike. Every real estate agent has access to the MLS. Every real estate agent has access to mortgage interest rate buy-down programs. So if you were to advertise on the internet or do a video on social media and say, hey, you're worried about the rates? Don't worry, we can get you a buy down where you can buy down the rate. The public goes, oh, fantastic. Thanks for reminding me of that. I'm gonna go call my cousin who has a real estate license and I'm gonna do my buy down with them. So you actually enabled somebody else to buy a home and you don't get paid for it. So we rename things to create 
curiosity so that people don't know what you're talking about. And they have to call to find out what you're talking about. Less is more. So we created in this market what's called a mortgage interest rate offset program. So Pete Middleton is doing a video on social media and he goes, hey, I'm Pete Middleton with eXp Real Estate. And if you're concerned about the rising interest rates, don't be concerned. We've developed a program where you can get last year's rates today. Yeah, that's right. Buy a home today at last year's prices with our mortgage interest rate offset program. For more details on this, give me a holler, shoot me a DM, private message me, send me an email. They call you, you don't even have to answer your phone. You call them back when you want because we're attracting. Another thing that we often do is there are buyers looking in your market right now for homes. You may not even have a buyer, but if you want to get a listing in a luxury market, recognize that there are buyers looking in that market. So Pete lives in La Jolla, Craig's in Philly. If Craig wants to get a listing in downtown Philly, all he has to do is say, hey, due to the shortage of inventory, there are buyers who have not found a home yet and are willing to pay top dollar, waive inspections, close when you want to. If you're interested in matching your home up with a buyer, give me a call and we'll try to match your home up. So now they call and you you book the appointment. Hey, when can I see your house? Rather than just traipse a bunch of buyers through your house, when can I see your house? When you get there, you go, um, yeah, my buyer, you know, they were looking for something that needed a little bit of work. They're handy. They wanted to do some fix ups. You, you guys have a really nice house. It may work, but does price matter to you? Seller says, well, yeah, price matters. Well. You'll get a better price if we expose your property to not one buyer, but the whole market. Price is driven by supply and demand. Can I show you how we create a bidding war on your home? So that's an example. Here we go. I can share my screen now. I'll show this and then I'll shut up. We've got a sell without listing program. Matt Badiat has made hundreds of thousands of dollars on this program. And this is a brand new squeeze page that we just wrote this week just change tri-state with whatever your market is. Sell your Philadelphia home without listing it for sale. No signs, no showings, no open houses. How does that work? It works really great. When can I see your house? We match your house up with buyers. It's kind of like Dave Lawson's, you know, off inventory special, just a different way of being unique and articulating it. Uh, I'll show you one more and then I'll, I'll well, we got a lot of people here who have great value to add. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. We used to advertise the buyers that we were working with so that we could double end more homes. So I had a team of buyer's agents. I had eight buyer's agents in our staff meeting. I'd go, hey, Paul, who are you working with? He goes, I'm working with Devlin, McCula, and Walters. And I go, Jennifer, who are you working with? I'm working with Willette, Demers, and Clark. Where are they looking? What are they looking for? What's their price range? People would call me every week. We'd get one deal a week from this campaign. And they'd go, oh my God, I was going to list my house with my cousin, but you've got a buyer. You know, are they still looking? Yeah, they're still looking. When can I see your house? So it's all about bait. Think like a fisherman. Don't think like a realtor. Think about what does the fish want? You know, different fish eat different food. There's a government program out there right now in most states where if you're looking in a remote area, the government has a stimulus package and they'll give you money to buy a house. Why don't we advertise that and get everybody to call? Now, when they call on this program and they wanna live in Scottsdale, there's no money available for Scottsdale, but you still are talking to a buyer. Hey, you got to be looking over here. No, no, we don't want to be over there. We want to be in Scottsdale. And now you're talking to a buyer who wants to buy a million dollar house in Scottsdale and you convert it to an appointment by simply saying, hey, we've got a proprietary program. We can get you access to all the great deals in Scottsdale. Where, where are you looking? What's your criteria? And let's get you set up. So bait, bait, bait. And I'll close with this. 
Lead generation is independent of getting the appointment and independent of getting the listing or getting the client. Don't try to do all, don't try to sell yourself in the advertisement. They're not making a decision to hire you when they see the ad. They're just making a decision to learn more. So thanks for, thanks for that, Pete. I hope that was helpful. No, that, that, that was dynamite. That was fire. And I think those things that people can put into action. The other great thing, too, that I always notice when Brian gives tips like that, you guys, and you know, he was number one agent in the world for Call of Banker. This stuff works, but you got to put it into action. You have to take action in order to go fishing. You know, don't think like a fish, think like a fisherman, you know, and, and these people will come to you and then it's just having a conversation, but you have to have some kind of value proposition that they want, or at least sparks their interest to get them over. It's great, great stuff. Uh, I'm going to go from Brian over to Matt Battiata. He's not bragging. He's just applying for a job. Look at him. He's in his, his, his uh, state-of-the-art executive office. Matt, tell me what you've been doing lately to generate listing leads. A lot of people want to know, how can I at least get one listing? What do they need to do? Well, wow, so there's been so many good things. I'll show you some of the things that I'm experimenting with at the moment. So, um, you know what, I'm going to have to get rid of my background here so you guys can see when I hold something up. But I've been experimenting. Can you guys see that? Shoot, hold on. Let me get rid of my background here. Sorry. Um, you know, leave yeah, your I guess the, yeah the, the first thing I would say is whatever your whatever your budget is, let me turn this off. There we go. Whatever your budget is, um, you know, I think Dave mentioned you got to be able to afford to do this stuff consistently, right? So, um, but it doesn't matter. You could have a budget of a hundred bucks or 200 bucks a month. So um, I send out very similar mailers to what Dave sends out, stuff like this. Now, these are, you know, these can be expensive, like Dave mentioned, right? So not maybe not everybody on the call. But the company that Dave and I both use and Dennis uses, I think these are like these are like a dollar thirty, I think, to send out. Um, so you you can send them out pretty inexpensively, and you can pick a neighborhood that is small enough. You know, I used to make a really good living off of a, a neighborhood of two hundred and seventy eight homes. Okay, you can mail out to that for you know three hundred bucks a month. You can also send out much smaller postcards. So direct mail still really works. It's pretty antiquated, but it totally works. And to piggyback on what Brian was saying is you've got to offer something that makes you different than everybody else. So I'll give you an example of an ad that I've experimented with over the last month, which is um, up to $10,000 to prepare your home for sale. Okay. In a changing market, you only get one chance to make a first impression when your home goes on the market. Um, so it's more important than ever to make sure that your home really looks like a million bucks when it hits the market. We'll give you up to $10,000 to prepare your home for sale. So whatever your home needs, you know, flooring, paint, uh, handyman repairs, landscaping. Now, am I going out and writing people checks for $10,000? Of course not. I've got contractors that will do whatever work the house needs. And as long as they list their home with me, we'll bill it through escrow. That's and everybody on this call can do that. And I just thought, well, gosh, that's something that would probably really resonate with people, right? A lot of people do. And I've met, I had a, a $3.9 million listing appointment the other day who called me because of that ad. You'd think this person has plenty of money, but he said, you know what? I just, I lost my job and uh, I don't really have a lot of free cash. And so that $10,000 was very appealing. So, you know, I'll have my painter go out and paint his house for seven or 8,000 bucks and he'll get paid at close of escrow. So I think it's really important. You, you can advertise your, you know, image advertising, but you really got to come up with some sort of a USP, right? You can just say, you know, your, another ad that I do that I like doing is, um, you know, your first 30 days is always your best window of opportunity to get the most amount of money for your home. That's where we guarantee all of our listings sold within 30 days. Everybody on this call can do that. How do you do that? You have to price it very competitively, right? And we all know, guess what? Almost in any price range and in any market, your first 30 days is your best window of opportunity. So if you run that program, it's going to make you honest. You're not going to go out and take a listing at an overpriced price. 
which is to the benefit of the seller, right? So I think a USP is really, really important in any market and in any price. <clears throat> Love it. Great stuff, Matt. Great stuff. Let's go over to Brian. Yarber is up in, in Montana. You know, he's fishing as usual on the, the white. What is it called? The White River? No, it's uh, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're up in Yellowstone. You're like the new John Dutton. All right. So listen, give us yeah. some tips on how people can lead generate today to get their business really, really off the ground and going in February. All right. First of all, the riches are in the niches. Bobby, that's a fresh line like your hair. That was incredible. And uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm a foundational business guy who looks underneath everything and then builds a house above it. So back to the foundation of everything I've just heard, all great tips. Rewatch this and pull the gold out of every single share. And Pete, you started it out with this gold line. It's all in the conversion. So all of this doesn't work if you're not good at the conversion. So my wisdom in this situation would be you are, you the agent, you are the person responsible for the success of your marketing based upon your conversion. So every conversation you have, whether it's door knocking, an inbound call, an internet lead, a referral, the goal is to really realize what you're in business to do, and that is to build a trust relationship where you are attached to the outcome of the lead. If you can focus on that, you will ask better questions and listen more. So, so the conversion begins with understanding that these a lead, in my opinion, is somebody who interacts with me, who I already know what they're doing. That I already know when they're going to do it. I understand what they need from me and they can trust me. That's a lead. Until then, they're just opportunities, you guys, because an opportunity isn't locked into a loyalty agreement with a handshake with you until you've gone through, whether it's a lead as a listing presentation or a buyer consultation. But before you can even get to that, they have to have some trust in you. So we're in the outcome business. And I really want you to focus on if you don't have money to do all these things, practice one thing. Learn how to become a good listener. Entertain what they call the nugget. I call the nugget the gold they handed you. Hey, you're, you're in real estate. How's the market? Hey, that's a really good question. Well, let me ask you, what are you thinking about doing in this market? Buying or selling? We get quiet. I want to know how I can attach myself to their outcome. When they tell me what they're willing to do, it doesn't matter if it's a sign call. It doesn't matter if it's an open house lead. It doesn't matter if I'm at a networking event. I want them to feel like they just met somebody who's in the service business. We have a fiduciary. Our fiduciary, our oath says that we are faithful servants. How you become a faithful servant is you attach to their outcome. Matt Battiata lives in my marketplace. I see him almost every morning on TV during the news or whenever. I know this guy. I know how much he wants to help people. I know how much he cares. People don't know how much you care until they know how much you care. They can't know how much you care until they talk to you and they meet you. And then they see your value proposition. So if you're in your deals and you have one or two deals, when you're in your deals, you're out of the market. But when you're in the market, you're out of your deals. Get there in a hurry. Learn how to do this because we are all marketing. 100% of the time, wherever we go. It's when you learn that the lead conversion, the riches are in the niches. I love that, Bobby. Here's what the niche is. Always be prepared to be the outcome for that client. And when you learn how to do that with your scripts, Dave Lawson could be at dinner at Park City and having a great dinner. And they'll go, hey, that's our, you're, you're in the real estate market, right, Dave? I see you. I see you all around. How's the market? See, when they ask that question, they're asking you, how are you doing in the market? But they really are asking you, how's the market? Because they're interviewing. This is a job interview question. We get asked it every day. Learn a script that turns that around to build trust, to put that and convert, like Pete said, convert an opportunity into a lead and then follow up with them in such a manner that they build trust and then you'll know everything about them. And oh, by the way, they will refer you all day long. That's mine. Love it. Good stuff. I mean, I think that's super, super important. Mitch, do you want to add to anything? I, I have a- Sure. I mean, there's um, literally 
I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna do a hot fire. One of my favorite lead gens is. Uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> is my my screen just went crazy? Is Starbucks. So think about this. If you want to generate leads and you don't want to go out and spend a lot of money except for a cup of coffee, uh, one of our agents does this and does about 30 transactions a year. Uh, and they get to pick their market. So if you're in a lower price market, you can do this. Uh, he goes to Starbucks Monday through Friday from 8 to 11. And on the back of his laptop, this is a tough one. It says, real estate question, ask me. Brilliant, right? And so what 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 happens is people who go to Starbucks, the guy that goes there from nine o'clock at nine o'clock every morning is there at nine o'clock every morning. That's the one thing that Starbucks delivers is is consistency in their customer base. Uh, I one of my agents do this recently. Listen to me, actually listen to me. What a concept! And his first day at Starbucks got two buyers and is talking to a builder about listing his properties now. So it's really slow. So, and, and you know the key to this is to get out of your house. You know, yeah. do something. When I mean, you get out of the house, do something. Um, you know, a lot of people are, we've talked about this before, reactive realtors versus proactive realtors. Uh, I never did reaction. I'm a proactive guy. I went out and got business and it wasn't that hard. I need open houses. Um, I didn't have a circle of influence when I when I got in the business. I, I knew my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and, and she wasn't <laughs> buying anything because she lived with me, which is I tried to get her to buy something, but she wouldn't. Um, and, and I still sold 36 homes my first year, but 28 were those were open houses. So I mastered open houses, which go back and watch the videos from the last two weeks because those are gold uh, tips on open houses. So that's one of my favorite ones. I did another one that was really good. It was called Welcome to the Neighborhood. And every time I closed on a house, I would do a, a driveway party, of course, with permission of the buyer. And we'd do, um, you know, I'd send a postcard up to the neighborhood, come meet the Joneses from three to five on whatever day. And I'd, I'd bring a portable barbecue and uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, beer, wine, and uh and so and uh soda and water i think my cost was about 300 dollars on a higher end sale and i love this one i did this with one of my uh professional ball players is um uh, is we did a private dinner before the couples in himself so five couples plus my wife and i and we did a private dinner and i brought it in catered i made fifty thousand dollars on the sale so i told him i said look let's have a let's have a really nice welcome welcome party and invite four of you of your closest friends. And from that came two eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar leads. Because the nice thing about the welcome to the neighborhood type parties, for the moment you're the star, right? You're the star until something breaks. And usually a week or two in, nothing's broken yet. So you're okay. Um, I, I literally have a million of these things. If you're in a vacation area like Park City, like Florida, where I'm at, or California. Um, and I'm sure this somebody's got a reason to go to Indiana. Yeah. I'm not sure really why, but uh, <laughs> okay. um, is um, do a staycation. So I'll give you an example: Cocoa Beach here, one of the biggest destinations in the country. Go, and we've done this. My, my wife and I go to the go to the beach, uh, get a um, get a hotel, and hang out in the pool and meet people. Because one thing we know about those people there, they're not from here. All right. So just there's a million, I guess my point is, and, and I'll keep this really brief, there's a million ways to generate leads. Pick one or two, maybe three. I did four. Uh, join clubs, meetup.com. I'm just things come to my brain. Meetup.com, join a club, except for the ones that have a lot of realtors. Right. Or I played sports. I played baseball, ping pong, bold, and golf. I generated sales from all of those groups throughout the years. But the point is, get yourself up. I'll give you one more quick story. I had an agent come to me recently, who um, who had, struggling doesn't want doesn't know how to do business. So I said, and I said, what are you doing? She goes, well, I'm home on social media. I'm like, great, that's that's awesome. Just go sit on your ass in social media. Pardon my French, but um, nothing wrong with social media, by the way. But you got to do more. So I said, look, there's a coffee shop. It's not a Starbucks. I want you to go in there. They have the longest lines I know, but I want you to go in there. And I want you to stand in line, wait for coffee. And I want you to say this. This is really challenging. To the person in front of you, I want you to say, how's your day going? And they're going to say, it's going good, great, bad, whatever. But they're going to say, how's your day going? And when they do that, I want you to go like this. Oh, I'm in real estate business. It's crazy right now. And they're going to say, oh, you're in the real estate business? I have a question for you. So anyways, two hours later, I get a phone call. So you got a listing doing that. Great story, right? Uh, grocery shopping. I grocery shop. I love grocery shopping. It's where all the old ladies sit on me. It's kind of fun. 
Uh, and when I go grocery shopping, I always pick the longest line, always, because that's going to start a conversation because I'm going to say hi to whoever's in front of me. And if I don't like that person or they're boring, I'm going to go to the person behind me. But I know I'm going to have five or 10 minutes standing in line talking about real estate. Um, you can generate as much business as you want. Uh, but I also go back to what Brian said is if you don't have a conversion process in place, it's not, it doesn't work. You can literally generate a million leads a month. If you have a no conversion, no conversion process, it's not going to work. And I'll give you one example for that and I'll shut up. Um, I was doing, I was speaking in an event on lead conversion uh, last year or two years ago. I don't know. I lose track of my time. And I said, who's got a lot of leads? And this one guy that very proudly boasted, I've got 10,000 leads in my database. I go, so uh, what did you do with that? He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, you have 10,000 leads. What did you do with the leads? He goes, well, I, I sent them an email. I go, right, so you did nothing with the leads, right? I go, you would have been better off buying a couple of, couple of kilos of cocaine. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> and, and, and of course, that was the last time they asked me to speak there because of the cocaine joke, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, but my point is, is this guy wasted probably $100,000 on lead checks. So internet leads cost 10, uh, 10 bucks each, 10, 12 bucks, and didn't have a process in place. So put together a process and you'll survive. This is not, this is not difficult, guys. None of this is difficult. Look at this. This is not because I'm a good looking guy that I sold a thousand homes, right? It's because I just generated leads and I learned how to convert them. Thank you, hey, Sean Kamer. And you hey, guys, the hey, other uh, thing too, and, and Mitch doesn't give himself enough credit. He is known as the playboy of Publix. That's his uh, going name. That's why he hangs out at Publix with all the old ladies. But uh, you know, in all fairness, Brian doesn't say learner process. Brian says, if you don't have a process, sign up for his coaching immediately. It will change your career. It will change your life. It'll change your production because he will help you formulate a process to get you to the finish line and for you to succeed. That's what you have to do. I want to go over to Randy. He's on the beach. We saved the best for last. He's got sun, sun lotion all over him. Look at, he's got sunscreen on. What, Randy, I, I know you talked about investors. But you also ran a brokerage. How are you guys generating leads? And say you were a newer agent that didn't have a track record. What were you doing to generate leads? Take us home. Yeah, so I am going to go back to investors because uh, actually this is this ties into Mitch. Sorry. So uh, I, I, if you like sports, for example, since I, I work with a lot of investors, including agents in my office, the reason they were attracted to our office when we owned the brokerage before we moved to EXP, they, cause, because of that niche. So these are the things I would teach them. Uh, I would ask them like, what do you like to do? Oh, I like hiking or I like biking. I'm like, great, go on meetup.com, find a biking club, go and bike. So people get to know you as a biker first, not a realtor first, right? So what do I do? I joined, I, I know a few investors now uh, in San Diego and I, got invited to play pickleball. I was like, heck yeah, I'm in, I love pickleball. So I've been playing pickleball with investors, an escrow officer, right? And then that investor invited another new investor who I never met. And his name is Greg. I got to know Greg just from playing pickleball. I got to learn how to what he does for his business, how he markets. He does investing in New York and in California. Great, I hooked him up with a realtor that we have on my team in New York. They're doing business. In the meantime, he knew I, that's what I do. So, and I offered my, I was like, Hey, if you ever need help, man, I'm always here to help you. Like I didn't like throw up on him. Right. Well, guess what? In November, he got a wholesale lead through Instagram and for, through a DM. Someone found him from Fresno, locked up a deal here in spring Valley messaged Greg about, Hey, are you interested in buying this house from me? He called me. He's like, Randy, can you go out to Spring Valley with me this week? I have a wholesale that I might be able to buy. I'm like, great, let's go. It was a slam dunk. I was like, Greg, you got to buy this house, dude. Like, don't put a lot of money into this. Put like 15, 20 K. Don't renovate the whole thing. I gave him the whole strategy. I was like, we're going to turn this thing around and list it. He, he locked this thing up for 450,000. But I already knew that we're going to list it at a price that's going to be very competitive for the market. And it's going to be priced under market significantly so he could generate a lot of activity. We listed this thing literally this Friday at 599. 
if you if you know anything about San Diego, to find a four bedroom, two bath home on the cul-de-sac in a decent area in Spring Valley for under 700, it's very hard, right? This was listed at 599. Guys, we got 33 offers on this property. We actually ended up one of our buyer, one the buyer that ended up going into escrow is actually a buyer that we are going to be representing. They stood out the best. They were a cash buyer out of all the 33 offers. We got two more buyers from that listing. And the reason I'm sharing all this is that once you actually get out there and then you land one of these things with, let's say, an investor like in my, my niche, they need to sell. They're going to sell and they want to price it competitively. They don't want to, they don't want to be listed at the top of the market, right? They already know the game, right? It's all about quickly turning money. They're, they're not in a housing business. They're in a money turning business, right? So they listened to me about the pricing strategy and he got the deal at the really good price. Listen to me and we did it exactly how I told him. But what also I want you to know, don't if you get so excited about that one listing and you forget about all the other business that can come from it, you can literally leave three additional transactions on the table if you forget about what can come. And in this situation, we knew we're going to get a ton of activity, which and we knew that some buyers are going to call us directly. And they did because they want to work with the listing agent. And we turned that into additional business. But the way we communicate to them, we got to be careful so we don't also get them away from us because we have too many offers. We want to give them a hook like, hey, there's an opportunity. Let's go look at it. If you're serious, send me a pre-approval. Yes, well, let's see if we can get you in the top five offers out of 30 offers. And then build that rapport, meet them. And then if they don't win, at least we can work on getting them another property, right? So turn that momentum into two, three, four transactions. It could literally set your whole business on the whole diff on the on the path of success for the whole year from one transaction. So that's my takeaway is like if you work with an investor or with a seller that is allowing you to price it the way you want to price it, make sure you maximize that one opportunity to the fullest because it could literally won't go from one listing to three, four, five transactions. Love it. He finished right on time too, you guys. So he's he's exact. Right on the right on the numbers. So we're gonna let's do part two of this next week. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be on. I'll be traveling, but I think we should do part two of lead gen next week so people can get more nuggets out of this, more tips. So go through your 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 references, your database, your all your files. Mitch, go back to the grocery store, the Publix, you Playboy of Publix, and find some other ways to uh, come up with some good leads. You know. He's going to be known as the vagabond of Vons. That's it. That's what he's going to be known as with his with his hair and his blue jacket. All right. So this was a great session. Let's uh, everybody invite, do, do everybody a favor, invite somebody to this next week. There's a lot of great information here that people can apply right off the bat to help their business. You guys, great job. Let's catch up next week. See you guys. Have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good week, guys.